Amen and amen. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Welcome, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on behalf of the mission and ministry of the Hawkinsville First United Methodist Church, we welcome you. Today is the first day of September and the observance of Labor Day weekend, so everyone continue to have a safe and hallowed Labor Day weekend. We welcome those that are viewing online with us this morning and those that are in the pews, those that are absent from our presence that are seeking a little rest and a little respite over a little bit longer weekend time. Welcome, welcome. Will you pray with me? Gracious and eternal Lord, here we are. We're opening our lives first for being drawn to the communion table and every element of worship we experience and we participate in to lead us to the table of grace. Almighty God, take our hearts and heal them. Take our minds and mold them. Take our lives and make them what you would have them be. Beginning the worship, we now open our lives and center in our worship on Jesus Christ in whom we live and breathe and have our being. Accept the worship of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. And welcome on the first day of September. Great to see August come and go. September's here. Fall is around the corner. It's the hottest part of the year, but I've seen a couple of leaves falling. So I know that fall is on the way. We welcome everyone today. Our Ultra Flowers calendar and our Acolytes calendar is in the bulletin. Thank you to our Acolytes. Y'all did a wonderful job this morning, and we appreciate your service. Wednesday night supper this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We're having ham, sweet potatoes, and black-eyed peas. J.D. and Jamie are serving, so don't be late. Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Fill out a blue card, if you will. You see them in the pews, and if you'll drop it in the offering plate, we want to make sure Nancy has all the names, so we'll have supper for everybody on Wednesday. If you're a visitor to our church, we welcome you, and we'd love to know more about you. Please fill out a card should be a visitor's card in your pew, and if you'll fill it out and let us know you're here, we would love to reach out and say hello and welcome you back. The small editions of the upper room, um, upper room books are in the narthex. Pick one up. We'd be glad for you to take one home and keep that. Those are great to have as a reminder through the week and for your devotions. The bud vase on the altar is in honor of the birth of Bennett Michael Lewis, who was born on August 27th. Bennett's parents are Clayton and Logan Lewis, and his grandparents are Wilsey and Rosemary Wright. Congratulations. Perry Methodist is presenting their new play, Donnie and Clyde, on Monday, September 16th. Anyone interested in coming, please call Stacy and let her know you'd like to join us for that. Grandparents' Day will be celebrated next Sunday, September 8th at the 11 o'clock service. We look forward to that special day, and the Kick Kids will be performing. There will only be one service at 11 o'clock next Sunday, so please make a note on your calendar. Lyrics of Life, the BG's Fall Bible begins on Sunday the 8th, that's next Sunday, by Lisa Harper, and it's a study of the Psalms, and we'll meet every Sunday at 6 p.m. You see those dates in your bulletin. The men will not meet for coffee devotion. We're going to give our cousin a break from 
cooking up all those biscuits for us. We always appreciate it, cuz. But the men will not meet. We'll take a break for Labor Day. And the church office will be closed tomorrow, Monday, in observance of Labor Day. Save the date. We have Bishop Deese coming Sunday, September 15th. She's coming to Trinity United Methodist Church of Warner Robins from 5 to 7. Join us. Everyone is welcome. We look forward to welcoming our new bishop, Deese, and that's going to be on the 15th. A special announcement. I got a message from Karen Bailey, and Karen has had a heart cath, and she is recovering very well. But keep Karen in your prayers. We miss her. Karen, if you're listening, we know you know that we love you. And we look forward to seeing you back. Today is the first, and it is Labor Day tomorrow. And Johnny, Bembry, and Latrell are celebrating finally their 51st anniversary. I think I got that right. I think we announced that prematurely last month. Happy anniversary to Johnny and Latrell. And also, Johnny's birthday is on tomorrow. So happy birthday to Dr. Bembry. Presley Wynn has a birthday on Tuesday. Karen Greenow has a birthday on Wednesday. Happy birthday to Karen. Elizabeth Wright has a birthday on Saturday. Have I missed anyone, or does anyone have an announcement for us this morning? Thank you. Let's stand and have our first hymn. If you want to join me. First hymn is on page 365, our opening hymn, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's take a minute and pass the peace of Christ, our friends and neighbors. you. We continue to have an extensive list that we go to in our bullets and in our lives. I don't know if you do like I do and I've got a list right with my devotional materials. Many of you I'm praying for daily for your physical strength and health and those that I don't know about I put under the unspoken or silent but needful of prayer and so we come to that point one I would like to add is Linda Williams she may be watching online this morning uh, Nancy is recovering from her fall in the office and uh, Linda had a broken foot this uh this week, and so we're asking for your prayers for both of them to completely get back into their regular routine. And I want to invite you to remember the, um, the walk for ALS, that Linda's still taking donations. Uh, she should be able to monitor the table there at that, so that if you still time, uh, that walk is not until later on in September, so please be attentive to that. But let us pray for one another. Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, there are many prayer requests that we don't even know. We come from the fields of faith. To the faith of a sacred space where generations or almost 200 years have come to lay before you their offerings and their prayers so we offer our prayers now for each name and each situation we rejoice for healing that has come in so many variety of ways and that we can trust you for your promises. And what you say is true. And what you say we can believe. And we can take it to the bank. So Lord, do it again. Whether it be physically, spiritually, emotionally, or relationally, 
do it again from the cross of Calvary. We ask your abundance of the water and the blood that flow to come down upon us and heal our spirits in this very sacred space and in this land. The sin sickness of our souls permeate but cannot overcome. For you have overcome it all. May we find victory in the very table of grace that you invite us to today and that we, we come and take part in. Now, O oh Lord, for all the others that are un- understood but not mentioned, we ask your grace sufficient for every need. And we thank you for the opportunity because you gave us breath, you gave us energy, you gave us the opportunity to be here in this very sacred space with you, O oh God, and with one another. So it's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I offer the anointing upon individuals and circumstances, and we pray together that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and gave us as a model prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now our ushers will come for our offering. Pray with me for guidance. Oh God, just as we look into a mirror to see any soiled spots on our face, so let us look to you. In order to understand the things that we have done amiss, we are like a reed shaken in the wind. We are inexpressibly weak. Leave us not to ourselves, but dwell in our hearts and guide us in our thoughts and actions. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, T. Thank you, choir, to prepare us to come to the table. The table has been set. As a little girl, I learned how to set the table. That was one of my chores to help my mother prepare for guests. It was one of my desires to help her in getting everything just right if we had guests. The table of grace has been set by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and is awaiting you and has given the great invitation that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. So I invite you to hear the familiar words as Paul was doing the rendition to the church of Corinth. He needed to remind them of their duty, not only their duty, but the remembrance, but also their behavior at the table. It was all wrapped into one. Today, I just invite you to come, just like the choir sang, come to the table of grace. Hear the words from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 26. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after the supper, and he said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. These are the words of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, continue to abide with us and guide us. Teach us through the word how to approach the table of grace and receive once again from you the bounty and abundance that is awaiting. Take now our spirits and allow this to relate not only literally, but spiritually. In the name of Jesus Christ, touch the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and lives. Hide me behind the cross that they would not see anyone but Jesus, in whose name I humbly pray. Amen and amen. I remember that the table was a very central place for us in the Bandy household. Shirley and others that went to Mission U heard a little bit about that kitchen table. That kitchen table was where Mark, Mike, and me would gather before we went to school, and we would have wonderful sibling discussions. You got it. And then at the evening before all of our sports began to take over all of our lives, with me and softball, them and football, baseball, and Mike and track, uh, they, we would gather in the evening. And it would be the three of us, because my father was awfully, often away, traveling, making a living. My mother would let us eat first, and then she would eat. She would clean and gather things together, and then she would eat. Very, very different approach 
than many that I've had even recently. But those gatherings around the table, the special times, the special times when I was in other countries and I was invited, yes, Lowry, to the bishop's table. I haven't been in the U.S., been invited to the bishop's table, but in Africa, that is a custom if you're on a team. And Bishop Wandavula and also Bishop Mwambe, they invited us to their table, and the banquet table was set. The best tilapia, fresh tilapia that you would ever put in your mouth, melts in your mouth, was offered before us with all the fixings. It had just been caught that afternoon and prepared for us especially. And God has done that through the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He has set the table of grace for you and me. What are you expecting when you come to the table? Well, let me tell you what you will receive. It's a conversation not of meanwhile sibling discussion and minimal sibling discussion, but a conversation that will be truth in love. The truth, the person of Jesus will meet you here and has invited you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, to the table of grace. Conversation of truth. No lies here. No fabrications. No deception. The truth will meet you here. A conversation that Jesus will make eye contact with you. Eye to eyes over and over in the Gospels. It said, and he looked into their eyes. He looked as if he were looking into the soul. Jesus will meet you at the table of grace, looking into your eyes of your soul. Jesus will meet you and get to the heart of the matter of what's, what's on your heart. What's on your mind? What's going on in your life? I've got a few friends that I love them to death, but I can't get a word in edgewise, believe it or not. <laughs> I can't get a word in edgewise. It's all about them, and that's okay. That's great. But by the time that we've expended energy and listening and time, and then it's like, okay, I don't have anything to say about me. <laughs> but Jesus is meeting you and wants to hear your heart at the table of grace. Let him come and change that which is in you. Maybe not the circumstance or the situation, but change you at the table of grace. Opening your eyes. We can come to the table of grace, have our eyes opened. Oh, how the conversation would go around the tables of importance and information, the working lunches, the working suppers, the, the business that would be discussed, and the eyes that would be open to the true factor of who the persons around you are. The truth will be around you, and you open your eyes. When you come to the table of grace, Jesus is revealed more and more. And Jesus clarifies who he is and what he wants to be in your life every time we sit at the table with him. I invite you to try this in your home. Maybe some of us who are single, it, 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 it will impact us a little bit. But leave a blank chair, an empty chair at the table, not for a loved one, but for Jesus to sit in and join you at table, at your own table. And understand that when you come to the table of grace, Jesus is enough. You don't have to have all the things that the world says you need. And have, I mean, I get bombarded with ads every single moment, every single day of what people just know what I need. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, I didn't know I needed that, but evidently I needed that. You know, I need that extra this or extra that. I don't. I got more t-shirts than four drawers can allow. You know, I don't need another t-shirt. I love the sayings on some of them. I don't need another t-shirt. Do I? Of course, I'll probably 
buy another one sometime soon. But Jesus is enough when you come to the table with grace. Jesus is enough. And when you come to the table with grace, you'll find out that you have enough in Jesus. Because of the abundance of joy, everything you need for life is available. Jesus is enough. You are listened to. You will be listened to at this table of grace. When nobody may not listen to you at all or just kind of throw you aside or just saying, you know, well, you're just, you're, you know, go, 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 go deal with it yourself and go take care of it. Jesus is here at the table of grace to listen to you. Jesus gets it. Jesus gets you. Remember the woman who anointed Jesus' feet? Yeah. Jesus gets you too. And Jesus will get up before you and lead you from the table to the avenue of great commission to go into all the world and make disciples. Moving and serving. It's a table of grace. The amazing grace, the unmerited, undeserved, unearned love of God. God's choice to save and bless you and me is available and overflowing and represented at the table of grace. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The benevolence of God is here. The overarching love of God is available. Through amazing grace, God's grace is embodied in the fulfillment of the scriptures and the law in Jesus Christ, the culmination of God's love for us at the table of grace. For the law condemns what God's grace saves. God sets the table, and God has set the table and invited you and me. There's a banquet and a bountiful plenty of love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, generosity, and self-control at the table of grace to overflow and nourish you and strengthen you to move forward and make disciples. The decision is for you and for me. I'll never forget, and I'll just share this briefly, that we were on our last afternoon and evening, and we were going around uh, Africa and looking at where we had been and what, had been, and we had placed a water well, and we were checking on the water well in a community. And they said, if we're going to go dedicate it, and then we want to invite you for a meal afterwards. Well, this was a meal that was in the remote place, out in the middle of nowhere, and in a place where, you know, you really, you had to intentionally go and come, and that you really didn't know if they really had enough to even provide for themselves. And so we dedicated the well. We looked at it. What, it was operating in full condition. The community was so grateful and gracious. And we went, and my team surrounded me, our team surrounded together. And there were about six of us, and we sat around the circle on the little stumps and everything that they had placed for us as little chairs. And they began to bring the pots of food out. Now, not knowing exactly what was in that pot, some of my team members decided that they would not, they, 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 they were having stomach trouble. They didn't, they didn't want to eat. That's okay. And I, I went, and I'm the adventuresome one. And I partook, and I sat with them. In fact, there was not a stump around one after I had gotten through, and I sat at the feet of the host and hostess, of the people who own the place. And I had never felt more welcomed. I had never felt more loved. 
and cared for. I survived, and there was no trouble, and I was glad because I accepted the invitation. And I was ever grateful. You'll be grateful if you accept the invitation. For Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live at peace with one another. Therefore, I invite you to join me on page 12 of your hymnal or look to the screens for that great confession the confession and pardon of our lives. Now, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, and we have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Will you continue with me in the ritual and the great thanksgiving as I lead with the light print and ask you to follow with the dark print and follow on the screen if you so desire. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing everywhere and always to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery of sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, Jesus, you took the bread and you blessed it. You gave thanks and you broke it. And you gave it to your disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus, you took the cup and gave thanks to our Heavenly Father. You gave it to your disciples and you said, drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your Son, we now offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So now pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here out of love for you and love for one another. And on these gifts of the bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for you the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by, his, by your blood. Make your spirit be one with us in Christ, 
one with us in each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty. Amen. The table of grace is awaiting you. You have a personal invitation from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'll ask the musicians if they will come and receive, and then the ushers, they will guide you as, as you will come to the table of grace. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ has been shed for you. Arise, a conversation awaits, a conversation of truth. A person of truth, Jesus, meets you at the table of grace. Arise and listen for the truth. Amen. There's not only a conversation, but the person of Jesus wants to look in your eyes and see into your soul. Arise. He has already done so. Be free to be changed by his grace. Amen.
arise now from the table. There's abundance. You receive the abundance and overflow. Now share with others. You can't keep it to yourself. The invitation must go on. The abundance must continue. Arise in abundance of joy. Amen. Everyone, if you'll stand and join me in our closing hymn, it's found on page 301, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross.
Now arise from the table, the table of grace, and be gracious in how you treat yourselves and others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.